For nearly 4,000 years, the Great Pyramid of Giza towered over the deserts of Egypt as the tallest building in the world. At a spectacular height of 481 feet, it was an impressive reminder of the Pharaoh's limitless power and his status as a god. It was also an enormous undertaking. The two million stone blocks that went into the pyramid could weigh up to eight tons each and had to be dragged from miles away. The project was so massive, in fact, that it would have taken around 25,000 workers to install a block every three minutes in order to finish the pyramid within 20 years. But who were the builders behind these magnificent feats of engineering? Most people imagine that it was slaves working under the lash of a cruel overseer. Movies like The Ten Commandments helped spread that notion by showing the pyramids built by thousands of Hebrew slaves. Even outside of Hollywood, politicians and parents alike have continued to pass on the false view that slaves built the pyramids. But as any archaeologist will tell you, that notion simply isn't true. In fact, the reality is much more fascinating. In this video, we'll take a look at where the myth of the slave builders came from, why it stuck around for so long, and what life was really like for the workers who built the pyramids. It was an immediate hit when the Ten Commandments came out in 1956. Even today, it is considered the best biblical movie ever made and one of the most financially successful films in the history of Hollywood. Unfortunately, that success has also meant that millions of people have been exposed to an ancient Egypt that has nothing to do with reality. The movie features an evil pharaoh whose obedient slave driver strolls among the thousands of toiling Israelites, brandishing a whip and making sure that no one shirks from their obligations. Some of those obligations include dragging a giant stone block across the sand and hoisting an enormous stone obelisk. Unfortunately, these kinds of scenes are just plain wrong. The Ten Commandments is far from the only movie that's shown slaves building the pyramids, even within the past decade. Movies about ancient Egypt have shown the same kind of scenes, where a captive Jewish population is forced to work as slaves to build the pharaoh's elaborate pyramids and monuments. What's so wrong with these scenes? The simple answer is that there were no Jews in Egypt when the pyramids were built because Judaism did not yet exist and would not for at least another thousand years. Still, that hasn't stopped people from believing that Jewish slaves built the pyramids. For example, the Israeli statesman Menachem Begin made this claim during a 1977 visit to Egypt. Many people no doubt believed him, but if the pyramids weren't built by slaves, who did build them? Who would have willingly done that kind of backbreaking labor? And why? The real pyramid builders were nothing like slaves. They were treated well, paid for their work, and lived in one of the best parts of town. You see, they were housed in a place called Hait el Gurab, which was a city built specifically for the pyramid workers. This city was far more than a work camp for temporary laborers. This was an elaborate city that even included its own bakeries and breweries. Workers ate expensive veal along with goat and beef, and they would have no doubt spent time drinking in the breweries scattered throughout the vicinity. Contrary to the popular image of a starved laborer being worked to death from sunup to sundown, the real men who built the pyramids were respected citizens. Based on the evidence found at Hait el Gurab, it seems likely that they even lived alongside important officials and public administrators. They also would have done far more than just drag stones across the sand. It turns out that when Hait el Gurab was constructed, it was located on the banks of the Nile and was most likely an important trading hub. All kinds of imported goods would have flowed through the city, including everything from olive oil to building materials. For example, in order to get the copper required for the workers' chisels, the pharaoh would have sent out his workers on trade missions throughout the Middle East. That means that far from being the mere grunts that we normally think of, the men who worked on the pyramids served multiple functions and were a crucial part of the pharaoh's economy. They were so important, in fact, that when they died, they were buried in tombs close to the pyramids themselves. That is, they had the honor of being buried right next to the pharaohs, and when you understand what Egypt was like when the Great Pyramid of Giza was built, you can see why the pharaoh valued his workers so highly. You see, the pharaoh Khufu, who ruled from 2589 to 2566 BC and commissioned the Great Pyramid of Giza, was following in his father's footsteps, who had built three during his reign. Khufu commissioned a pyramid that would tower over everything his father had built to outdo him. Each pyramid was a royal tomb and a monument glorifying the pharaoh who built it. It's no surprise that Khufu went to such lengths to ensure his grand project went off without a hitch. 
He took such pains to provide his workers with everything they needed, but as honored as these workers were, their lives were far from comfortable. The work that they did was brutally difficult, and as you can imagine, many developed arthritis or other job-related injuries, and many died an early death. So why did so many men take part in building the pyramids? The simple answer is that these men believed they worked directly for God. You see, unlike other Mesopotamian societies in which the rulers claimed to have a close connection to the gods, the Egyptian pharaoh was believed to be a divine being. That means that when the pharaoh asked you to do something, it was more than just a request. It was coming from God himself. And as it turns out, that kind of obedience was one of the reasons why ancient Egypt became such a successful civilization. The pharaoh had enormous power and used it to create amazing public projects that transformed Egyptian society. The Pyramid of Giza is the most visible example, but the effects of the pyramid go far beyond the structure itself. Every time a group of builders sailed across the Red Sea to gather materials, they strengthened a network of trade that added to Egypt's wealth and power, and the vast amounts of resources needed for each pyramid led to the building of harbors and created the need for trade with cities throughout the Eastern Mediterranean. When the era of the Great Pyramids finally ended, the sophisticated trade networks that had arisen for their creation remained in place, and future pharaohs could use them to carry out building projects throughout the vast Egyptian territory. From then on, more and more resources went toward developing the rural land and building smaller tombs for local bureaucrats. In other words, the infrastructure originally to glorify the pharaoh was eventually used to spread wealth and prosperity around the rest of Egypt. Although we think of the pyramids as giant monuments built by oppressed labor, the truth, as you can see, is quite different. The work was hard, but the men dedicated to it were considered important members of society. They also believed in their actions because they participated in something divine. Far from being slaves driven to work by the threat of violence, these men could take pride in their actions, and the results of their labor are nothing short of stunning. Over 14 million people visit the pyramids of Giza every year to admire these ancient builders' amazing work, and to think that the workers did all of this, not because they were forced to, but because they believed in what they were doing, makes these ancient wonders all the more marvelous.